introduction, uh, I now invite uh, Elena to uh, please open the discussion. Uh, Elena, over to you, please. Thank you. Thank you so much, Priyank. Hi, everybody. Today, we're really excited to learn about the landscape of opportunities for edge tech and edge fintech in Indonesia. And we're delighted to have this expert panel to share their thoughts on this today. So the first question, I'm going to give it to Pace Agro in San. Uh, perhaps we'd like to open the session to share an overview of the agri sector in Indonesia. And then we'd like to particularly focus on the challenges facing the smallholder farmers. So in San, please. Okay, um, thank you, um, Elena. Um, selamat sore, um, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I think first I'd like to take this opportunity uh, first to thank UNCDF and all its partners um, for bringing us to join this great um, forum, joined by all of you today. It's an honor. Um, perhaps I'd like to um, start, um, I think, agriculture sector in Indonesia in a nutshell. Uh, we Indonesia has about 180, 190 million hectare probably um, at which uh, of land, uh, at which 30% of it, about 50 to 55 uh, million hectare uh, is, is um, classified or categorized as um, agricultural uh, land. The country's um, agriculture sector is one of the uh, largest global producers and also um, exporters. Um, of at least uh, three crops. Um, you can name it as uh, palm oil for sure, um, coffee, rubber, and um, cocoa. Um, to date, it is uh, the second um, largest contributors to the Indonesian economy. Even during this um, pandemic, uh, while other sectors um, suffered um, steep um, decline, Indonesian agricultural sector still um, has shown positive uh, contributions uh, that could manage to grow about 2% um, uh, between 2020 to 2021. Um, the, the sector, the agricultural sector is um, sustained, um, as you've mentioned, Elena, uh, by smallholder who are um, uh, the central to the, to the majority of the commodity supply chain in, in, the, in the country. Um, in palm oil sector, for instance, a uh, smallholder um, owns about 40, 40 to 45 percent of, of the uh, agricultural land. In um, cocoa, about 80. In rubber and coffee, probably more than 90 percent are sustained by smallholder. Um, so we see this as both um, uh, opportunities and challenges as well, right? Despite, despite their, their crucial um, role, the play, they play the, uh, in the ecosystem, um, they, I think, face a significant challenge, which is um, low productivity. Uh, and this is, uh, I think, the main challenge that all the smallholders scattered everywhere are facing. Um, um, why low productivity? Because they have poor access to input materials, they have poor access to um, a market, they have poor access to um, capacity building or good agriculture practices, um, and also poor access to finance. Um, so uh, improving uh, their productivity uh, and, and um, uh, livelihood are key to improving the Indonesian um, agricultural sector. I think I'll, I'll post that um, uh, and, and about wait for uh, the other panels. Thank you. Back to you, Elena. Thanks so much, Insan. I think that was a great overview. Um, I think I'd like to draw on that point where you mentioned low productivity as one of the key challenges faced by smallholder farmers. Uh, and then I would like to sort of pick on the brains of Patrick right now from BioCrop Science. Um, could you give comment on which areas do you think good technology can help in terms of delivering the impact uh, that faces these smallholder farmers? And could you perhaps share like Bias experience with working with some of these edge tech innovators? Patrick. Sure. Thanks, Elena. So I fully subscribe to, uh, to Insan's points. Uh, I think you did a good job in capturing the challenges of smallholders. I think they're also not surprising to, to most of the participants in this, uh, in this call as smallholders do face similar challenges across the world, right? So if we look at uh, whether it's financing, whether it's access to off-taker markets, whether it's 
education around proper agronomy and how to maximize yields and in the end increase their productivity. I believe all of those sectors offer opportunities for tech. Yeah, so I think ag tech can and already has shown that there's solutions to all of these problems. But a key piece uh, that, uh, that needs to be considered and something that I've been missing in some of the conversations I've had here in Indonesia, um, as well as in Malaysia with some, some startups is they need to really be developed with the smallholder farmer in mind. Yeah, um, oftentimes we try to find, we have a solution and we try to find a fit for it. But uh, I mean, product market fit here is, is key. And uh, you really need to understand what is the Indonesian smallholder actually facing on a day-to-day -day basis. And for that, you're not going to get around spending some time in the field and really digging down. What does it mean access to finance for an Indonesian farmer in Eastern Indonesia, right? I mean, if you, if you take a look at Indonesia compared to, for example, India, Indonesia is a huge archipelago, yeah? 17,000 islands, 25 million smallholders spread across those islands means that they're geographically totally fragmented. Yeah, So they're difficult to access, they're difficult to reach. Um, of course, they all face, in addition to this fragmentation, a lot of the challenges that you see in other smallholder markets, like the volatile cash flow situation, the high dependency on weather, um, the perceived higher credit risk yeah, within doing business with them. So I think generally the approach to the business case needs to be quite different than some of these, you know, some of you uh, as participants from the tech space, then, then the approach you might be taking in some more consumer facing tech. Yeah, I think the, the whole idea of um, agriculture by nature being a slower industry because it's based on seasons, it's based on seasonality, it's based on weather effects, makes it pretty tough in agriculture to jack up a valuation very quickly and seek a, seek a quick exit. So that's actually the wrong, wrong strategy for agriculture. You need to be, you need to be targeting at real mid long-term sustainable solutions to, to concrete grower problems. And that's, that's what, what we put special focus on at Bayer. So if, if I just share a little bit on how Bayer has been working with, uh, with the ag innovators across the globe, actually, you know, um, We've got a number of, of initiatives, whether you're looking at the Western world like US and Brazil, where we have some big platforms, which we either created internally and then spun off, or like uh, the Climate Corporation, some of you might've heard about it, which is a digital farming application we have in, in those larger markets. Um, but even here in APAC, we just recently launched our digital incubator based out of Singapore, which is basically all around corporate venture building. You know, so those are some of our internal hack innovation plays. But uh, we know that, you know, as we, as we try to shape agriculture and do our part to food security and, and ensuring we improve the livelihood of smallholders, we're clear that we cannot do this alone. So collaboration and partnerships, especially with, with ag tech and, and people with really strong and smart ideas that are based in a real customer problem, those are always interesting to us. Yeah. And um, you know, the conversation that I've had so far, ag innovators have, and, and startups have been really interested in talking to Bayer because we have a very strong direct customer access, right? It's part of our business model. We sell crop protection and seeds to millions of smallholder farmers. And for that, we need to be on the farm. And just give you an example, this Better Life Farming program, which we launched a few years ago, we've got dedicated Better Life Farming centers in the field, which basically act as retail shops. And it, allow us to have direct customer access. That's something we bring to the table when ag, when ag innovators, for example, try to access the Indonesian market. I think that, that synergy between bringing in the tech aspect with, with you know, our, for example, our customer access and our uh, agronomic expertise is a super powerful solution. Um, so not sure how long I've been going now, Elena, but uh, let me just close with one point on this question. Um, you know, it's, it's a difficult space, surely. You cannot look at it the same way you, you look at other tech opportunities, but the opportunity is so huge. So the investment is totally worth it. You'll need a lot more courage. You'll need a lot more patience, but the opportunity is huge. And one thing we need to remember is besides the business opportunity, there's a huge impact on improving the livelihood of millions of people. Yeah. And I mean, talk about purpose-driven, right? So this is something that uh, where you're not only chasing an economical benefit, but a true sustainability and social benefit as well. Thanks a lot. Back to you. 
Thanks so much for that wonderful sharing, Patrick. I think you touched on so many good points, but I wanted to bring this conversation to the next level with specific interest in agri-financing and agri-fintech. And then uh, this is where you can put in your inputs and you can share with the audience uh, where your views are in terms of agri-finance. Thank you, Elena. Um, hi, everybody who attended uh, the session. Um, great points from Patrick and Insan previously. Um, so I'm coming from a bank. Uh, we are transform, uh, transforming ourselves into a digital bank, which focusing on gig economy workers. And as you know, gig economy workers consist largely in Indonesia, consist of uh, people who are working in uh, agribusiness. So in terms of agri-financing, uh, definitely there will be a gap, uh, the bankable and the unbankable. Uh, banks are a, a heavily regulated industry all over the world. And we find gaps uh, that there are some people, not some, but there are many people, there are many smallholder farmers that cannot be touched by the regulations uh, for banks. So that's why uh, us in BRI uh, Agro, uh, we are looking uh, at coming into an agribusiness uh, uh, ecosystem through uh, AgTech partners, uh, where the AgTech partners can touch directly, like Patrick mentioned, the customer facing solutions. And us as, a bank, uh, us as banks coming in to find in uh, the knots in the supply chain, in the ecosystem, where we can, where we are able to provide solution uh, from the financing that we can give. So basically, banks uh, are coming in as a funding support. Uh, at the same time, uh, we are also uh, focusing on how we can uh, increase the livelihood of uh, from uh, these smallholder farmers because apparently uh, BRI is a state-owned company, so we do have uh, sort of you know emotional emotional responsibility on how we can uh, provide uh, values or bring values to the Indonesian people uh, all over the continent. So that's why I think uh, over here, the, the partnership between banks and uh, ag tech players or agri-finance players or even uh, peer-to-peer financing uh, companies plays a crucial part uh, where you guys, uh, where the ag tech players coming in as, a, as an intermediary between banks and the smallholder farmers. Because if we are coming in uh, into a you know a complete ecosystem, uh, us as banks, uh, we are able to quantify uh, the risk. We are able to you, you know do the, all the risk mitigation, the banking risk mitigation, and we are able to provide you guys with the with the you know with the complete solution uh, where the farmers can have access to technology, access to agri inputs, access to the market, and also bank coming in as your partner as uh, for the access to the capital. So uh, that's why us uh, working in uh, BRI Agro, we are focusing on the uh, agribusiness um, ecosystem partnership. So I think uh, answering Elena's question uh, in agri-financing, I think one of the most crucial part is where you, where you will be able to find uh, partners uh, that are suitable with uh, your solution and also uh, the, the demands of, of the smallholder farmers where you can provide a full end-to-end -end solution uh, for this ecosystem. I think uh, hopefully that, that, that answers uh, your, uh, your questions, uh, Elena. Thanks. I, I think I'm gonna leave a little bit more of the questions for the second part of it, so stand by. <laughs> okay, I think that was a great introduction and great sharing of the overview. Um, perhaps we could go a little bit more in depth, right? So going back to Insan, to yourself right now, uh, maybe you could share a little bit more about the main gaps that currently the edge tech innovators and the edge fintech innovators are currently addressing in Indonesia today. Um, I think to answer that, I'd like to start by, I think Patrick has mentioned that uh, as well earlier, by saying that to help increase the, the, the Indonesian sector at scale, um, it, we need um, uh, partnerships, we need collective actions, uh, we need to work together um, under a uh, multi stakeholders approach uh, because smallholders are scattered, right? They're here and there, they're sitting in, uh, in, in, in a legal area, they're sitting uh, in, in, in illegal area. So the spirit of, of partnership needs to be uh, embraced. And sometimes, uh, often, often uh, it is, uh, it needs to be done um, uh, under a certain landscape or jurisdictional where uh, 
all the stakeholders uh, are operating in in that area could could involve right um, there have been, I think, uh, in Indonesia, many, many um, uh, multi-stakeholders initiative uh, led by the governments, led by the privates, um, led by uh, the non-governmental uh, organizations as well. And, and there are lots of uh, names as well. At Peace Agro, we call it inclusive closed loop models, uh, uh, at which uh, it gives uh, a certain need uh, to the smallholders, right? Uh, because uh, when you involve um, stakeholders, many, many stakeholders that, that there are certainly on, on having um, accesses to, to um, of, of taking access to, to uh, capacity building, access to finance as well, um, access to um, input materials and, and good agriculture practices as well. I think this is where I believe um, ag tech uh, and um, ag green tech providers could play a role. They could bring in solutions, right? That could enhance the the existing uh, partnership models uh, or multi stakeholders project uh, in an area, and also could could potentially develop uh, new partnerships uh, models uh, with other stakeholders. For instance, um, um, AgTech had, could lead uh, uh, commodity traceability exercises that could uh, map out uh, the the supply chain transparency uh, that is important not only for uh, companies in the producing countries like Indonesia, uh, but also companies in the consuming countries or world buyers or consumers, or, or, whatever we call it. Um, or um, Act Fintechs could, could provide solutions within uh, digitalization, such as um, uh, digital payment. Probably, uh, think, I think um, Adit could, could uh, share a bit on this later. Uh, they could connect from, from smallholder to the to the uh, of, ta of takers, um, um, for example, a farmer uh, could could order or pay um, agri inputs, um, or receive payments or loan uh, digitally under one platform, or uh, of takers, um, um, retailers, traders could could manage involved in the marketplace, buying or selling traceable products. Um, or financial institutions, right? Use the platform as, as payment gateway or, uh, or payment solutions and so on and so forth. So yeah, there are, there are uh, uh, um, I think, spots of, of places where AgTech and AgriFin could, could play a role in this um, um, uh, partnership models happening. Thank you. Thanks so much for that, Insan. I think you've given us a lot more insights. Uh, I just want to take a, uh, a little bit more um, detailed approach in looking at what criteria would a, an MNC take, you know, in looking at these partnerships. So maybe, Patrick, you could give a little bit more information on what the key criteria would be if you're looking for a technology or startup to work with, and what are some of the key clear deal breakers for you? So could you share this with the audience, please? Patrick. Sure, Elena. Yeah, thanks. Uh, before I do that, though, let me just react briefly to, to Insan's comments, uh, because they were on point. So uh, we talk about developing a platform or, you know, a, a digital wallet or whatever for smallholders so to, to enable payments, to maybe enable some sort of credit risk assessment for, for lenders, etc. You know, a key foundational capability that is needed there, it represents a major gap currently in Indonesia, is the data, right? Yeah. So that could be another opportunity, right? Um, consolidating, structuring, and drawing insights out of the huge amounts of data which are generated. I mean, I can just speak for, for Bayer, we're generating lots of data, whether it's location, whether it's the amount of crop protection product that is sprayed on a certain hectare, uh, you know, whether it's personal data with regards to um, some, 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 of the, some of the grower data that, that we're collecting. All of that currently is, uh, is, is like a treasure which is which is untapped at the moment, right? But and if you think about all MNCs are doing this in one way or another, uh, that could be an opportunity for for ag tech to to jump in there and make sure we get some structure and derive some value from from that data. Um, and one additional point, which I think I heard in a side comment either from Aditya or Insan, was the whole topic around carbon capture and carbon sequestration because. You know, currently farmers are really, smallholder farmers in Indonesia are really looking for, okay, what will improve my livelihood? What will improve my yield? So there's a huge financial piece to it, which we first need to 
uh, cover. But very soon after that comes, how can I increase the value of my yield, right? How can I be more sustainable? How can I be a more sustainable part of the ag value chain and perhaps convert that into an additional revenue stream, right? So topics such as carbon sequestration, where all of a sudden you've got how to measure, you know, nutrient um, levels in the soil, precision application, precision agriculture solutions, these kind of things could, could also be opportunities. Now, coming to your actual question, Lelina, uh, what, what key criteria do we look for? I mentioned part of this already in my, in my first question. So um, agriculture by nature is a slow industry. Yeah, it's very seasonal and it greatly depends on external factors. So the way you look at the business case needs to be slightly different. So if, if a startup comes in to our office here in, in, uh, in Jakarta and says, look, we've got this great idea. This is our, you know, this is the thing that will revolutionize Indonesian agriculture. And um, they think they have a one size fits all solution and winner takes all approach. It's, it's very unlikely that that's the case. Yeah. Um, there's actually, you know, you need to do a lot of piloting, a lot of failing fast and adjusting and pivoting to, to make sure you find the right solution. And for that, you need patience um, and, and a very, let's say, long-term approach to how you want to build up this opportunity, right? The opportunity is huge, but you also need to do quite a bit of investment. There's no, there's no real quick wins here, honestly. And uh, an ag innovator or startup that realizes this from the get-go and has solutions to address this challenge is actually, or proposals to address this challenge is actually at the top of our preferred potential partner list, yeah. Um, I mentioned in the, in the previous comment as well, you know, key is that there's true product market fit. So what are we actually solving with this technology? Um, don't assume that tech that, we, that, that was developed for Africa or for India automatically has a product market fit also in Indonesia. While the challenges might be similar, there needs to be quite a bit of customization. And again, you need to be spending time in the field in Indonesia to make sure you're actually addressing the key challenge that the customers here are facing. Third aspect is, uh, I just wanna reiterate this long-term business case around it because um, you know, seeing a lot of these startups compete for, for investments and basically trying to ramp up their valuations by putting a Bayer cross or a Corteva cross or some other MNC a logo on, on their potential partnership list, that's not the, the, the interest we have. We really wanna build sustainable solutions. So there needs to be a long-term plan in place, which, which shows inclusive growth. Yeah? There needs to be sort of a triple win relationship here. There, there's a win for Bayer, there's a win for the partner, but of course there has to be a win for the grower in the end, because otherwise none of this is sustainable. Um, the, you know, we, we know how to innovate on a traditional crop protection and seed portfolio where we've gathered some experiences in the last few years on how to innovate on the tech and digital farming portfolio. But that is definitely a place where we continue to be super open, back to my previous point on collaboration, to having ag innovators, startups, entrepreneurs with great ideas approach us. You know, I, for, for Indonesia, I can say we're open to any idea and willing to discuss anything because uh, I believe there's huge potential both on the business front, but also on the on the societal front to, to really improve these livelihoods uh, of, of the smallholder farmers. So, I mean, see this as an invitation also. Yeah, if you've got a great idea and uh, you wanna bounce it off, feel free. I mean, my team and I, we're waiting for you. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to, uh, to hearing from some of you here to figure out how we can uh, capture some of these opportunities in Indonesia. Thanks, Elena, back to you. Such wonderful points. Uh, okay, I just keep hearing partnerships, sustainability, long term, no quick fixes. I think this is where, uh, Adit, you know, you can kind of give that whole overview in terms of the partnerships that you're talking about, right? To bring very, very successful edge fintech and edge financing solutions to market, right? So maybe you could talk about what critical issues that some of these innovators should be very mindful of in terms of developing very viable partnership solutions for this sector in Indonesia? And then what is it that's important that they must understand, right? In order to establish this relationship with an, a financial institution like yours, um, some of the key issues you might want to highlight for all of us. Uh, and on that note, maybe you could share some of your uh, use cases as well, if that's not too much to ask. Okay, I think I think I think sharing out the use cases will be something that will be very important and 
not much to ask at all. So, 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 so just, just, just to touch about uh, how, how, how you built uh, a great, you know, a great partnership in terms of, uh, or, or how you provide, or how you create a powerful solution for this matter. I think uh, definitely since I'm coming from a banking industry or financial industry, I think maybe uh, Patrick and also Intan had, had already uh, touched it in a more complete way because because you know they are they're more on the they're more on the farm and I, I and for me i am more on the you know on the banking side you know like is this is this is this uh is, is the risk manageable how's the ecosystem look like are we going to approve or disapprove the credit and and and, and uh and uh whatnot uh but definitely i think um even even for us for banks uh since since we we do have reach i mean like don't get me wrong uh bri agro is coming from bri group so bri group is the bank is the largest bank in indonesia we have the most coveted uh, network uh, in indonesia in terms of banking even with that resources we are not able to touch you know uh those people in the unbankable side uh so and and i think uh, I, I forgot uh, on top of my head. Maybe, maybe, maybe the guys over here can, can can remind me like how many numbers of Indonesian smallholders that are not bankable. So as you see, uh, to all the agtech uh, players or the agtech founders over here, is that for you to provide, for you to create a solution, is that you need to create a complete solution. Uh, in in I, me speaking from uh, from the Indonesian standpoint. Uh, it's a bit hard if you provide, you know, you only provide like a singular solution. Like you, you create a technology just for the crop, you know, you, uh, you, you provide the technology just for the financing, or you create the technology, you know, just the crop insurance uh, on the crop insurance part, or you provide technology for the planting side, et cetera, et cetera. I think uh, looking at, I, I mean, like even 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 for me, I've been in the field so many times, and I've been talking to so many farmers in my life. I think, and all over Indonesia, they they are looking for a complete solution. Uh, but but definitely, like 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 the customer facing uh, solution might be you guys, the 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 agri tech uh, players uh, over here. But uh, for the farmers, they only look at one complete solution. Uh, they don't really care, you know, if you have a very nice technology, if you have AI, if you have API, you know, all this, you know, all this technology, they don't really care. Uh, they, they, they just want to ask you, okay, I would like to uh, ask for your help or for your solution. Like, what can you give to us? If you, would, if, if, if you can help us, you know, we can, we, we can, we can bring value to you as well. So looking at the farmers over here, uh, you need to provide, you know, a complete set of solution. Coming into the use case, um, like I do have a couple of uh, use cases in my head. Uh, one of them is that uh, right now we are uh, doing a pilot project with an agri-tech company, which is a part of a big uh, agriculture company in Indonesia. Uh, since we are not, you know, we are not official yet. Um, sorry, I cannot, I cannot uh, share the name yet. Uh, but 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 we so they provide an agri tech platform uh, an, an application on the farmer side for them to order you know uh, the farm inputs etc cetera, etc. Cetera. So what we are doing right now is that uh, we would like to put our financing inside the inside the application where farmers can put their data uh, personally. So for us the banks we don't have you know that hassle to prov to to collect data. And also for the for the agri tech players, they don't need uh, the hassle to go to the bank or, or or for the farmers to go to the bank. All the banking services are in the app. So for banks, I think uh, coming into the digital banking side, um, what we can do or or what we have to do is that we should provide a complete set of banking as a service uh, that will be integrated into uh, your uh, platform. Uh, in this in this case, the agri tech platform where you guys or your field officers or your or, or, or your farmers will be able uh, to access the banking services inside the platform. If either it's a mobile application or, or a cloud platform, after, um, all of that applies. Um, so we'll be able, so for so for the farmers, they will be able to see a complete solution in one in one uh, platform. Uh, you know they're not very tech savvy so it's 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 so much to ask if, if you ask them you know to 
download so many apps on their on, on their mobile phone. So 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 it's it's very un, uh, it's it's very not feasible. So for us to come into uh, the the partnership as a bank uh, as bank, uh, we we provide them with the banking as a digital services uh, digital banking services as a platform, and that and that one we are piloting right now and we are doing it for uh, to uh, one thousand farmers, uh, two hundred. Uh, so, so, so these 200 people are foreign input uh, store owners. Uh, so we provide, we, we try to provide financing uh, in the supply chain. So for the farmers, for the farm input uh, store owners, and also for the uh, off taker, if 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 the if, if if the bank has appetite for the you know the bigger the bigger credit line. So having that closed loop uh, closed loop ecosystem is the best way for us uh, for banks uh, to to acquire. Uh, customer in the agriculture in the agricultural uh, sector, so I think I think that would be one of the use cases. the The key message is I think I think uh, Mas Insan has already uh, mentioned earlier is to be the to to become a banking service for a closed loop agricultural ecosystem. Thank you, Elena. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, for wonderful inputs. Um, I think that's been very, very helpful to, you know, sort of give an overview on what opportunities are there for edge tech, edge fintech innovators in Indonesia. Um, we have got lots of questions, right, uh, at this point. Maybe I could just uh, pass this uh, conversation back to Priyank for a while, just to see which uh, of these questions, you know, we should give it to which of the panelists to address. Uh, but there's a lot coming in on finance, so Adit, you must be ready for this. Brace yourself. There's coming in from uh, Africa as well on finance. I think there's some questions on the technology aspect. So maybe Priyank, you want to comment on this? For sure. Uh, thank you for that, uh, Lena. Uh, there, are, there are a couple of questions on uh, access to finance. Uh, two-part questions actually. One is, what's the main reason for uh, poor access to finance or so many farmers being unbankable? And second is, how do we actually improve the access to finance of smallholder farmers in even other developing countries of Africa and Asia? So it's a two-part question that's coming from uh, different audience members. Perhaps Adit, you'd, you'd like to uh, take a crack at this? Okay, so I think the uh, the main reason for the poor access uh, to finance, there are so many reasons actually. So I'm just going to put two. The, uh, and this is uh, I'm I'm putting uh, examples in Indonesia. I think maybe the guys over here can can give examples to countries outside of Indonesia or other developing countries. But in Indonesia, uh, the first is the documentation. So a lot of farmers, uh, they don't have you know. Uh, there are a lot of farmers who doesn't have ID card. And ID card is pretty much, you know, the most simple way for you to get, uh, or social security number maybe, if, 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 if you would like to apply this to, to, to other country. Uh, and with for a person who doesn't have an ID card, the Indonesian ID card, they aren't able to get solutions uh, from any institutional, any institution, uh, financial institutions. Um, and other and other uh, and, and and you know uh, from that documentation it cats it, it cascades to you know more um, additional documentation that usually being asked uh, from banks like you know if you have a collateral uh, do you have um, they don't have collateral uh, if they stay in a house or you know if they have a farm or if they have a field they don't have any you know documentation on it uh, so so I think the the first uh, for for us uh, in this case. The first reason uh, uh, for them uh, they aren't able to get uh, you know access to finance is the documentation. So so how do we you know how 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 do we address that? So how we address that is that uh, we do have couple of farmer uh, we do have couple of partners that are uh, agri uh, finance agri focused peer to peer uh, or or a financial technology company uh, because. Fintech in, uh, in Indonesia and, and, and banking, we have a separate set of rules. So for us, for us to touch them, uh, what we do is that we do a partnership with the fintech, uh, with the agri fintech uh, companies, where uh, they where, where these fintech companies they help them with the documentation, 
to help them uh, with the you know with the financing part, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And we we as a bank we act as an institutional lender. So we channel our loan to the agri uh, fintech companies, and the agri fintech companies disburse our loan to uh, the farmers. And we are already doing it with a couple of agri fintech companies in Indonesia, namely uh, Tani Fan and iGrow. Um, and it's pretty it's pretty successful actually. Uh, so we are able to touch the uh, the numbers of you know the the unbankable uh, through that way. And the second reason I think just to add one more is uh, the remote location is is pretty true because you know uh, for them for for farmers to go into a bank it's you know it's an effort. Uh, they need to go through you know to, uh, through the remote areas to the to the broken uh, you know to the broken uh, road just to go to the bank and to get a small amount of money uh, and so how do we address that uh, right now uh, what we are going to do is that we partner uh, with um, how should I say in in, in in English it's pretty hard because it's it's it's, it's pretty uh, it's very Indonesian. Uh, we call it again laku pandai so 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 it's a, it's, it's agent so it's a financial institution agent that are uh, you know uh, and, and and they're located uh, in the remote in the remote uh, locations uh, every part of indonesia uh, the biggest uh, agent business is pretty it's actually in B, in bri in our uh, in our mothership in our holding company uh, they have 600,000 agents uh, throughout indonesia and uh, they become the mini ATM, they become the mini cash in cash out uh, vendor. And for us, what we do is that uh, we are utilizing the, the, the agent that are spread out uh, in the remote location throughout Indonesia. So the farm, so we can disburse our loan uh, to, to the bank account that are being created from our agent in the remote location areas. So, so, so that is one of the one of the biggest solution I think uh, that BRI group has been able to address uh, by recruiting agents in the remote location. And I think, uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of microfinance companies in India, in Africa, and all over the world have been doing it. And I think for me personally, I think right now that is still a, a very powerful solution uh, for you to able to spread the financial inclusion uh, to the remote location of smallholder farmers. Hope that thank, you, thank you for that, uh, uh, Adit. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I, I understand that uh, Patrick needs to leave, so we'll probably just uh, ask one quick question to you, Patrick. Uh, there are a couple of questions that, which I think might be interesting. Uh, first is around uh, data. If a startup has to work uh, with buyer in helping you massage your data and build solutions around that, be it credit assessment or 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 inputs or on those lines, how what sort of use cases do you have uh, or opportunity do you have for Actex to collaborate with you on, on that? And second, any solutions that you see around soil testing or soil management uh, that you would like to explore as well? Yeah, great, Priyank. Thanks, those are both good questions. So on the first piece, you know, as part of this Better Life Farming Initiative, which I mentioned before, it's which is basically like an ecosystem of different farmers, actually in Sun's organization, and we've been in touch on this pre before. Um, you know, we, we try to get together a bunch of different partners from different industries to cover as many of the challenges we've talked about that small holders face as possible. Um, and as part of that ecosystem, we're obviously generating a lot of data, which all of the partners in that ecosystem benefit from to improve the offer that the ecosystem is then, is then providing, right? So when it comes to what, which concrete needs do we have, we'd have to discuss on a one-to-one -one basis, but it's basically figuring out what type of data is important for each of the different partners in the ecosystem? And how do we make sure that we're mapping out the correct path of that data, right? From the customer, you know, for basically from the data ingestion through the processing all the way to delivering the data insights to make the entire thing more valuable for everyone. Um, and that's a space where of course we have internal data capabilities as well, but we are not a data science company, right? So uh, this is something that intrinsically a, a startup could be could be much better in, whether it's information crawling and, and delivering those insights in, in that way. But that's where I'd see a potential to collaborate. And um, on the other piece, Priyank, which is around soil health and, and monitoring, um, in the end, any solution that helps the grower optimize his or her application in the field um, and lead to higher yields is something that we're interested in. because. At the end of the day, 
the better that the the better productivity that the farmer has, the better it is for us as an ag input provider, right? So uh, things like uh, analyzing soil nutrient level, whether it's for precision application purposes or just for tracking what type of um, crop uh, calendar you should be following, something that we can definitely discuss. Again, I'd say there's a few more urgent challenges to tackle. So it's always a question on what is a smallholder farmer's perceived sense of urgency to tackle a current topic. And I think there were, and financing and market access are probably some of the most urgent ones. But uh, I'm happy to have the conversation on any of these topics. So uh, appreciate the question. And sorry that I have to jump out a few minutes early. I, uh, I really enjoyed uh, this conversation. So thanks a lot to the other panelists and thanks to the participants for joining. I'm looking forward to staying in touch. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thanks Thank you, so Patrick. Much, Patrick. Great. So uh, perhaps, uh, Elena, we could take up two or three more questions since we have some more time. Uh, yes. There was there was one question that uh, we saw on uh, on uh, InsureTech. Uh, I don't know if others you or you know you'd like to uh, give it a go. On what sort of uh, InsureTech solutions do you think can can help smallholder farmers? Uh, address perhaps income continuity or more sort of income security as well. What was okay. the question again? Sorry, I can't see it. Okay, perhaps I could answer it first and then I'll, I'll just add it up. Oh, by the way, is this, is, is this for, for Insan or for me? Maybe I, I, I misheard it. <laughs> Maybe you can, uh... Uh, you can go ahead, Adam, please. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so but, but sorry, before that, not... before that, uh, Priyan, can you can you uh, repeat the questions, please? I just want to hear again. Sorry, yeah, the, the question the yeah. question was on uh, insure tech on how we could provide insure tech solutions for smallholder farmers that helps address issues of income continuity and uh, you know more more uh, livelihood security for the farmers as well. Hmm. Okay, as as from my side, uh, since we are working with with insurances to to make sure that. We got our loans back, you know. Uh, so, so, so for us to see that uh, there are a couple of uh, insurance initiatives uh, where they use, you know, the weather predictions. There are a lot of factors on how they can create a an insurance um, an in, an insurance premium, uh, focusing on on, um, agri on agriculture. I know, I know. I heard, I heard from a lot of people that, that that it's a very, you know, it's a very hard thing to do. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that, that that technology has the answer for it, since you know, since it involves with a lot of data. Uh, if you guys have, you know, uh, the solution uh, for weather prediction, uh, the uh, you know, the the agronomy side uh, type of data and artificial intelligence, I'm pretty sure there will be some sort of solution. Uh, for an insurance company to to create uh, a premium uh, that focuses on uh, agriculture, maybe uh, Mas Insan can add more on top of that. Um, yeah, so thank you. But uh, well, essentially, if we talk about the uh, insurance, uh, as, and then uh, Adit comes comes from the bank. Essentially, uh, banks obviously wants their loan back. Am I correct or correct, Ma Adit? Right. So essentially, um, then how how then okay. the the smallholder um, is assured that they could then pay back uh, the the loan facility they are given to them. Uh, um, one of the ways is of course work with the uh, the partner with the insurance companies, but also um, uh, at the existing um, models that Peace Agro um, has been um, doing. Um, is to um, to have partnered companies as a guarantor or as a as a, I don't know the terms avalist I don't know is that a, a term but as a guarantor so so essentially uh, banks would see it or financial institution would see it as a less risky if then the companies are acting as of taker could also act as guarantor for the loan facility uh, but then also companies uh, need to. There's, uh, there's opportunities where, where the partner companies could work with the insurance to split the, the, the risk or the, 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 for, for, for the smallholder. Um, it's not so much going on, but yeah, I think in palm oil or cocoa, uh, I think it's already happening. Um, so yeah, there are opportunities. Uh, I think insurance could, could, 
could play in, could play their role in the in the in the uh, closed loop uh, partnership that Adit has mentioned earlier. Hope that answers them. Back to you, uh, Priyank. Uh, thank you so much, uh, you know, and Adit both for your for your views. Maybe we have time for just one last question, uh, and then I'm afraid we'll we'll have to bring this first segment to a close. Uh, we will, of course, take up all the questions and we'll come back to you uh, separately after the discussion as well so that we, you know, we have responses uh, for all the questions that you've uh, raised during the discussion. Uh, there is one on uh, carbon credits. Um, I, I don't know who uh, would like to take this up, but uh, it's a question by, uh, by Bumitra uh, in the Q&A tab, which talks about, uh, you know, using satellites and AI to generate verified carbon credits for farmers. So, uh, how does how does this actually look like in in indonesia do you see any sort of potential for this uh, in indonesia and from a carbon markets perspective perspective what's the landscape like in the country and are there any solutions that you've seen working in this domain i think there are potential oh, sorry adit can i just um, take it uh, to, to start the answering this yeah and then probably you could yeah i think i think i think <laughs> know, knows about this a lot more than i do <laughs> No, I'm, I'm not. I'm not an expert. I'm not an expert uh, for, for for the first. But um, uh, carbon markets. Uh, I think we. It's. Uh, it, I think yeah. We see we, we see it as potential. Uh, obviously, uh, if we could take a look at for for the smallholder. Uh, uh, but then again, uh, we need to to have to understand that smallholders are look at they're, they're scattered, right? So essentially. When we want to develop a carbon um, market or carbon credit, that needs to uh, we need to work with smallholders uh, that work in a, one continuous continuous um, um, areas, not scattered here and there. And we need to involve um, also um, um, stakeholders that are um, uh, in, uh, having interest in this in this market for the smallholder. Because essentially, what have been happening now is that. Uh, the carbon market uh, happens uh, uh, within the, the the main companies and the the buyer, uh, which is often not involving smallholders in the supply chain yet. Um, but I see it as potential for the next future, essentially because I said in the beginning, right? And I want to repeat again that smallholders are essential uh, to increase the Indonesian agricultural sector. So it has to happen. Um, one day moving forward. Thank you. All right. Uh, great with that. Uh, unfortunately, we have no more time left for the question. So I'll just hand it back to Elena for any any uh, formal closing of the discussion as well. Thanks, Priyank. I uh, just wanted to give thanks to everybody who has given such valuable inputs. I think one of the key takeaways today, it's really much about valuable partnerships. Right. And, uh, you know, developing long term solutions and how we can look at customizing to the location and the uh, geo uh, sensitivities of uh, Indonesia. Right. So some of these solutions have to be really uh, come pluck it off somewhere else and then try to implement it really has to be something uh, unique. Uh, and working in direct partnerships with uh, both finance institutions as well as the technology firms really has to be one that is a uh, long vision, right? So I think to the audience and innovators, edge tech, edge fintech, uh, interested companies who are looking at Indonesia as a market needs to see the entire landscape, right? Right from um, partnerships, right from the start where farmers are concerned all the way to the consumers, where consumers' data uh, matters to farmers, and there's a big disjoint, right? Information is not getting there, and the information is not flowing from both ways. And then there are partnerships along the, all the key stakeholders, the financing institutions, the government agencies, the technology partners. How do those partnerships actually work out? Can your technology platform be one that synergizes across, bring data from one point to another? I think these are big takeaways, right, from today's sessions. And I think it's very inspiring that, uh, and I really want to thank, uh, you know, Priyank, uh, UNCDF for putting all of this together so that we can just put our brains together uh, and understand what are the potentials, opportunities that our audiences can tap on, uh, what they can do to bring real solutions, right, to the smallholder farmers in Indonesia. And then, of course, bring sustainability to all of us in the region. Thank you very much, Priyank. Just want to close with that.